Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Arch with Imran. I'm Imran. I hope you guys are having a great day. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how I took this 2D detail and turned it into this 3D axonometric. Now, in this video, we're going to be using Rhino to do all of our shapes. We're going to be using Illustrator to clean up the line work and we're going to be using Photoshop to put it all together. So, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Rhino. I'm using Rhino 7, but you can use whatever Rhino you want. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've created a new document using the default small objects and millimeters as my units. Now, I have the element in this PDF that I want to use, and I'm gonna drag it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull it over and drag. Now we're gonna choose open file and hit okay. And I'm gonna choose pages specific because I know the page I want. It will then give me the option to preserve units doesn't matter because we're going to resize this anyway. Okay, so if we go into our top, here is our object. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything apart from the detail I want to keep. Okay, as you can see, this line here is where we want to cut it. But we have this box here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a straight line going across all of it, like this. Now, the reason we've done this is because this is where we're gonna cut our object and we're gonna use something called the split command. So we're gonna select all of this and then we're gonna deselect the line. We're gonna hold control and we're gonna click the line. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna do type in split and then we're going to select that line. And what that does is it uses that line to cut all of the objects at that line. So if you see now, we should be able to select up to there and delete everything else. So again, a lot of this is about cleanup. You just want to make sure everything's ready before you start doing your modeling. I can now delete this line or you can keep it. There you go. And there is our element. Okay, so now we've got element. How do we make sure it's the right size? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a line here just to check the width here. This says it's 2000 millimeters, which isn't correct. We want it to be 100. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the entire thing again, and we're going to type scale. And now we're going to click on that object again. And we're going to do this line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type 100. And now everything else should be to scale. What you're going to do is you want to go through certain objects and just make sure they're correct. Now, before you start doing this, it's really important you fully understand the diagram, you understand what each element means, and you recognize details that might be hidden. For example, we have horizontal battens here. Now this line just looks like nothing, but it's actually the vertical battens that the horizontal ones are attached to. So again, make sure you study your detail and understand what each element is. Okay, so now we've got element and it's all ready and it's the right size. I'm going to quickly talk about layers. Now, because each of these elements is a different material, we're going to, it's going to be crucial that we keep our layers tidy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer for each individual item. This will just speed it up for later and it will really stop the design getting confusing. I'm also going to color coordinate it. So for example, we have this 100 millimeter PUR foam here, this insulation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer and I'm just going to do 100 millimeter and then what we're going to do is we're going to touch here and it will make it the current layer and then I'm just going to change the color if I make it red for example. Now again none of these are necessary but for me they help they help the workflow and they stop you getting confused. So instead of choosing anything on this diagram we're just going to use the points to snap to and you want to make sure um, intersecting object snapped is on in the toolbar but I also keep these ones on at the bottom you can copy them if you want. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to click on each corner and we're going to make an object for each of these things. Now, like I said before, the benefit of this is because we're on here, the, co the color is shown by layer. So when we extrude this, it will be shown the same color as our layer, again, helping us distinguish while we're in right now. Now we're on the top view, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto the perspective view. Okay, and we're gonna take this line and we're gonna just extrude it. So we're gonna do E extrude CRV. 
and I'm just going to extrude it up a specific distance, it doesn't really matter at this point in time. And what I'm going to do is because we're seeing the line work, we're going to go on the drop down and we're going to change it to shading. And there you go, we have our first element. Now, all of these details, such as the triangles for the insulation, I'm going to do an illustrator afterwards just because it'll make it more complicated if I try to do it in Rhino. And from my experience, they don't turn out as nice. And now essentially you're going to continue this for each of the elements on different layers and I'm going to come back to you guys when I've done that. Okay, so here we are back in Rhino and I finished it. Now we're on the top down view so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to perspective. Now keep in mind if you're when you're rotating if you get a crazy um, area what you're going to do is you're going to go on this zoom and you're going to zoom into one object and it will reset your center of rotation. And now as you can see I've extruded, I've got the line work here to the right and I've extruded all of these objects each one on a different material and I've done it to the same width. Now like I said we wanted to make this an axonometric so what I'm going to do is first this is laying flat we're going to stand it up. So again we want to make sure our gumball's on by ticking gumball at the bottom and I'm going to hit this red one and I'm just going to type 90. Now our object is horizontal and now again what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode this outwards so I can see all the different elements at once. So the way I'm going to do this is we're going to be using the scale 1D command. This will let you scale it, but it will only scale it in one dimension. So for example, we have this 5mm render. What we're going to do is we're going to type scale 1D. I'm going to click one of these points. I'm going to hit the other point. And we're going to just extrude it outwards. And then essentially you're going to go and do this for each layer so you can see all of the elements easily. I'm just going to do a couple to show you an example. Now obviously you guys will spend more time on this and you'll continue to do this, but it's really important to remember things like if you have vertical larch beams here then you probably will have horizontal ones somewhere in this area, even though it's not shown on the detail. Now I'm going to show you what I did before and I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so after extruding out all of these different items, this is what mine looks like. Oh, we need to reset our rotation again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on here, I'm just gonna select it, and now this will reset our rotation. So as you can see, I've got all of the things flat here and I've just extruded them out at different widths so we can see every single element from one angle. And now, like I said, we wanna make this isometric. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna go on, to, we're gonna go on this drop down, and we're gonna go set view and we're gonna go isometric. Now you wanna pick whichever one is best for your item. I'm gonna do Southeast and you'll see it'll, it'll make it 45 degree isometric. Now you wanna make sure you don't rotate the camera at all now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select it all and we're gonna go make 2D. Ooh. Make 2D. Now we wanna select group output so it's all under one group, just it'll make the, um, the work clean. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do maintain source letters. This is because if we need to do clean up, it'll make it so much easier. Uh, we wanna keep it in parallel and we wanna keep all the settings how they are and hit okay. And now if we go onto our top, somewhere here we will find the make 2D. So here is our make 2D. Here's the one we actually just made. Either way, they should be the same. So now we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to select it and we're going to go File, Print. And we're going to choose Vector Output so we can use this in Illustrator. And I'm going to set mine to black and white and I've put the resolution quite high and I've set the size to A2. This is because it's an A2 submission. And as you can see, a few of the lines like just here and um, there's a line here that are missing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Illustrator and we're going to clean this up. We're just going to hit select Rhino PDF again, choose our sizes and all these settings, and we're going to hit print, and it will give us the option to save it somewhere. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator. As you can see, I've started to add some of the details like this insulation, but we need to add those lines back. So very simple. We're just going to get our pen tool. We're going to click on the point, and we're going to match it up. Now I'm going to just put it here so I can see exactly where it should be. And I'm going to click here and we're just going to go back on the arrow. And there we go, we've added our line. Now say you want to add the insulation line as well, which is going to get the pen tool. And I'm going to do something like this. There you go. And now we've added details to our design. 
Now what you can do is you're gonna go through and do this again and you're gonna touch up everything, make sure it looks nice. I've added vertical lines on my battens. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. Now it's really important you don't resize it because this should be to scale. But again, we can double check this in Photoshop after. So what you're, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure it's all clean and then you're gonna save it as a .ai file and we're gonna drag it into Photoshop afterwards. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, I've got this color bitmap that I've downloaded. If you guys wanna see how to do that, I'll leave two tutorials in the card that will show you how to print off to scale in Rhino and it'll show you how to download uh, um, rasterized images that are colorful. Now, what we're gonna do is I have my AI file over here, as you can see the corner. Um, I'm gonna drag it over and we're gonna hit okay. Now, one thing to note, if your page is smaller than your detail, then it will be uh, automatically resized. Whereas if your page is larger, like mine, then your detail should stay the same size. And I know that my bitmap image is to scale, so hopefully these lines should just match up, which they do. I'm just gonna hit tick, and I'm just gonna hit V to go on the move tool. I'm just gonna use the arrow keys to make sure they line up nicely. That looks about right for me. But I think it needs a bit of thickness. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a stroke to this line work. We're gonna double click on the detail layer, and we're gonna go, it'll open layer properties, and then we're gonna add a stroke. I'm gonna do one of one pixel, and I'm happy with this. Now we're gonna add our legend, and there is our finished detail. Now, very quickly, it's really important that you make sure your design is really legible, everything's really easily read, and it's really clear. Also, make sure there are no hidden details that you've missed. So I'd go through, double check, and maybe ask a friend to double check it for you. And guys, with that, we've concluded our tutorial. Now, as always, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. And if you have any questions or video uh, requests, please leave them in the comments. I'll go through them all and I'll see what I can do. I'll catch you guys in another video.